Welcome to another episode of the Veterans Business Podcast. I, I want to sincerely thank you for your listener and for your viewership. Uh, one of the many goals of this podcast is really is to provide you, the listener or the viewer, a, with insightful information to help you in your business, uh, whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you're wanting to develop and hone your corporate leadership skills, whatever the case may be. I, I'm excited that you found the show. And if you're enjoying the show, of course, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw the shameless please subscribe plug in right now. That would be great. And if you want to tell your friends about it, share share one of your favorite episodes. Uh, oftentimes, there there there'll be a helpful little nugget of information uh, that can help somebody. So help somebody by giving them an episode of uh, of the show, whatever happens to be your favorite. So uh, I'm super excited. And I'm really pleased to welcome our guest this week, Jamie Chapman. She's both a military veteran and a military spouse. Uh, she served in the army for six years before punching out and working on a variety of ventures all of which we'll learn more about together today. Uh, she leads the company Begin With Careers. Jamie, thank you so much for joining me today. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me out. Yeah, I know this is, this is super fun. So uh, yeah, th just, just for everybody's benefit and, and I guess mine too, but we'd love to, we'd love to hear a little bit about your story of why, you know, why did you join the military? Like what did, that, what did that whole journey, that process look like for you? Well, I joke that I joined the military, got out to get away from it, and I married right back into it. So the Army has been a huge through line in my life and in my career. Grew up in Oklahoma in the middle of nowhere. I joke, but I'm serious that it was between Duck Dynasty and Blake Shelton out in the middle of nowhere. That's perfect. For college, I relocated to Lawton Fort Sill and then was inundated with the Army community there. Okay. impulsively walked into the Lawton Mall and joined the Army Reserves wow. like on the spot. Um, a couple of months later, I was shipping off to basic training and there began my love affair with the Army. Um, literally joined out of impulse. So uh, joined the Army Reserves, served for six years in the Reserves, got out in, I believe it was 2015. My transition was very quiet. I was a civilian by day, army service member by weekend, once a month and all of that. So it wasn't much of a career transition. Sure. Um, ended up, you know, moving on a couple of years later, married my husband, and now I'm right back into it as a military spouse. That's crazy. No, that's funny. So um, one, that it was, it, was, it was an impulse decision. So I've been stationed in Lawton. I was, uh, as a Marine artillery officer, we go through we have to share we have to share some space with the army at some point right but uh spent spent some time there in in lovely lawton um and you know it's just it's just funny funny to hear that that was that was an impulse an impulse move uh moving in and then um and then as a reservist you know you you're doing your time there and then punching out and then just to marry back into it so talk us through that talk us through talk talk us through the marrying back back into it part of All the story right. So I actually met my husband to be in Lawton Fort Sill. He was a young field artillery officer. He was there in command and he was busy and then he ended up deploying and I ended up moving to New Hampshire for four years. I couldn't get far enough away, I guess, from Lawton Fort Sill. Um, and so then, you know, my time in the army actually ended there in New Hampshire. And then I moved and my husband, to be was back in Fort Carson, Colorado. We kind of got back together there, if you will, not very romantic. Um, and then we ended up getting married at Fort Carson. Thus, Jamie Chapman became a military spouse and I had no idea what I was getting into. I had served in the army, but I was single as a service member and I wasn't married and I didn't know anything about military spouse career problems, which is my thing now. Um, married at Fort Carson, deployed husband, had a baby by myself, no idea what I was doing. And I didn't know about the resources available to me that were out there to help. Then we ended up PCSing from Fort Carson. We moved to Germany for three years, uh, got pregnant with my new son. We PCS from Germany to Texas, Fort Hood, where we are now, have a new son. We just relocated internationally really quickly. We didn't have our household goods for two months. We had a newborn on an air bed. It was a crazy time. So we're still kind of in the middle of unpacking and settling, but wow. life as a military spouse, I would say in my experience has been much more difficult than as a soldier. Cause I was a reserved soldier and it's quite yeah. a bit different um, than active duty. So military spouse life is not a piece of cake. Yeah. Wow. And uh, well, so first 
congrats on the birth of your of uh, of your newborn son. I think that's yeah, that's fantastic. And uh, welcome back to the, to the United States. Um, but no, I mean, so you've you've got a really unique, un, really unique insight and perspective. And so I, I actually just want to park here for just a few minutes and dive more into that. And I know it's a passion of yours because this is what you do. So I like I would love to just to just to hear, and I think I think everybody else would love to hear this too. Is um, you know, like that that change, right? So now, like you're going, and especially you, right? Because you were single before you got married and then you got married and then you're marrying back into the, the lifestyle. So like, what has that experience been like? I mean, you, like you shared a lot of it already, like, and so I can only really imagine some of the things that you've been through, but like, talk us through what that does in terms of disrupting careers. Like, how does that, how does that affect job portability and advancement and, and just career goals? I, um, I am a workaholic. So my Army Reserve, six years of time was spent going to college. I was pursuing a master's degree and working mostly full time. And I've been, I'm 30 years old and my entire one decade of career experience has been in the career industry. So I started out there working in special needs adults. Uh, I worked for a nonprofit and my job was to place special needs adults in jobs. Um, And so we kind of worked in, uh, we would do career training and prep them and teach them skills, get them volunteer positions in the community and sort of liaise with the state to try to get them paying positions. So that was where I started my career out. I worked in sort of an HR recruitment capacity and then did a lot of hands-on mentorship with the special needs clients themselves. Um, Then whenever I had relocated from New Hampshire where I worked at that nonprofit and I went to the Fort Carson, Colorado area, I worked with soldiers and I had been a soldier so I thought I knew everything. Um, transitioning out of the SFL TAP program, the Army's TAP, um, where I was a career counselor. And I had a caseload of probably 400 plus service members at all time coming through my office. It was a huge job. I loved it. I transitioned well from what I was doing before. So I had a rude awakening. I got laid off on my due date with my first son. Um, So as a career counselor, I've been thriving, doing really well. I even got little recognition and promotion and it was doing good and thriving in my career but you can't help it when you get 60 percent of your people laid off you're probably going to lose your job Uh, so that was my first negative career experience as a military spouse Um, shortly thereafter i obviously had my son and i get ants in my pants i just i can't sit still so i had within a month probably of him being born started dog sitting on rover.com i had 10 dogs in my house all the time i was losing my mind i was complaining about my child being too boring and he would sleep all the time so i started pet sitting now with my second kid being the little screaming red devil that he is i really miss those quiet days um but in that time when i was quote unquote bored and dog sitting and a new mom and my husband deployed uh or my husband had just got back from deployment and I was at home all the time. I started Begin Within at that time. Um, it, was a, it was a hobby blog and it was more of like a life advice because everybody wants life advice from a 26 year old person. Um, right, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that, was, that was the beginning of Begin Within. Sure. Um, it was about kind of blending your personal and your work life together, thus the name Begin Within. The three circles that are the logo mean the union of your life and your work, right? And you're the the tie that binds. So that's nice. kind of the namesake. Uh, but that was it. So I got bored real quickly, had ants in my pants, and then we ended up shortly thereafter PCSing and going to Germany, where I made the choice to work for the SFL TAP program again. <laughs> I took over the SFL TAP program in my city at USAG Spot, and I was the manager there and in charge of the location very quickly got promoted and was in charge of three different sites in the Rhineland Falls region of Germany. And that includes Ramstein Air Base area, the Army, and then the uh, launch school and um, bomb holder areas as well. So I was in charge of uh, like 1,500 transitioning service members per year and all of the supporting staff at those programs. And then guess what happens? I got laid off again. So I make the joke that I got promoted thrice, but laid off twice during my tenure at SFL TAP. And at this point in time, I took Begin Within and turned it into an actual business, providing career coaching and resume writing services. Wow. And that's a, 
that's a that's a whirlwind of a story. And shoot, I mean, yeah, I mean, starting starting at twenty six years old, man. I mean, you gotta you gotta start somewhere, right? You gotta start somewhere, and uh, and and no doubt, I mean, you've 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 been through you've been through a lot. I mean, I mean, even at thirty, you've been through more life experiences than a lot of people go through in their entire lifetime. Um, just just related to moving and kids and all the other crazy stuff that life can throw our way, but. Um, so like, well, walk us through then. So you got that, you got that started, like what were, uh, like what have been some of the challenges and obstacles as you've, so you're, you're not, you're no longer going back to those tap programs. You're going completely on your own. What, like, what have been the challenges then doing, doing it that way versus the other way? Um, let's just talk about the military community. And this may be some incendiary stuff that I say, but it's the experiences that I have had in my life. So uh, in 20, I think 2018, begin within, it already existed for two years and I hadn't made a dime. Start charging for USA Jobs Resume Writing Services. And that was my first little business in effort. Military people, they don't pay for things, right? You get a lot of stuff for free, like resume writing services, right? You go to Hire Heroes USA, love the program. I love the SFL TAP program. Don't, I'm not knocking any of these things. But service members and military spouses kind of get accustomed to having all of these free things available to them. And so uh, the first hard business lesson I learned was that you can't, you can't make a living charging 200 bucks for a resume to military people. So I tried everything to try to make that. Making money. I was fighting and having to reduce my prices and just trying to pull my eyeballs out and making military service members pay for these services. And no matter what I did and who I tried to market to, I am military in my DNA. I can't not serve the military community. And so no matter how hard I tried to market to other people outside of military world, who were my word of mouth referrals and my number one source of business? Military people. So I realized quickly I had to change my business model or I wasn't going to be in business for very long. And then that kind of got me on the track to where I am now, where I do staffing and recruiting. And instead of the military service members and spouses paying, companies pay me for placement. And that works so much better and it's a lot more lucrative. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And, um, you know, and I think you do hit on a, on a, on a pretty good hot button item. I mean, I guess it could be depending on the person you, you ask, but no, I, I think you hit on something there with people just getting accustomed to not paying for stuff or it's just, it's just a part of the lifestyle. You just get used to everything being provided to you. I mean, we, I mean, we grew, we, we grow and we uh, live, you know, on, uh, if, if you're living on base, I mean, you've got, you've got a house uh, or you got some type of quarters that you're living in. Then you've got food, you've got shopping, and then you got medical, and then and then all the other little all the other little knickknack type benefits that that can come along with that. And so mm -hmm. I I can certainly see how that would <laughs> that would be a challenge. And let me um, let me be straightforward. I am a recipient of those freebies and handouts, and I love it. But yeah. whenever you are a business owner and you're thinking of how the heck you're going to pay your bills, the service model I had wasn't working, um, and it was just purely because the military community, they get taken care of as they so deserve to be taken care of. Right. But in this capacity, it just wasn't going to work. I was, you know, I was needing to charge more than I was charging. I was kind of coming out backwards financially and it wasn't working. So I had to innovate my own business so that I could serve the people I love so much who deserve free services, but yet I needed to also make money. That's yeah. just kind of, that was the inspiration to explore other alternatives and I only had one expertise. That was the career services industry. Yeah. I couldn't just switch jobs. So then talk us through how did that, how that transition worked then when you went to recruiting and staffing and placement, what was, what was that learning curve like? And, you know, how did you get that off the ground given that your, your lane had been one thing and now you're kind of somewhat shifting gears ever so slightly? Well, um, it's been really clunky. So, I mean, I'm still, fighting a battle. I want so desperately to just get rid of resume writing services altogether, but I still have, you know, my business is only four years old technically. 
And I still have word of mouth referrals from three years ago when I first started writing resumes that say, hey, Jamie wrote my USA Jobs resume. She'll write yours too. And I do not want to do that anymore. Let me be very clear if you're listening. Um, I don't want to write resumes. I want to do the recruitment and placement stuff and make the money from the companies. It's better money. It's better work for me. But more importantly, what I learned really quickly is that your advocates and your fans are the people that come to you first that, you know, when you start providing a service and they come to you, they're your number one fans. They're your like core group. And my core group, some, they have the wrong messaging and it's still sticking with me today. So the transition has been really clunky. I still try to take care of people and do them a favor. I refer a lot of people to Hire Heroes USA. I love the organization. They provide resume writing services for free. Uh, but still, some people just insist for me to write their resumes and get paid for it, but not paid enough, by the way. So it's been clunky. Um, and then there was a whole other learning curve, not only with that whole piece and my messaging being wrong, it was the B2B side of it. Like, how does Jamie Chapman get a company to want to pay her money for the services that she can provide? Because I can screen, I did that before, and kind of performed HR functions and going through resumes and hiring and interviewing. I've done all of that stuff before. Um, but I was an independent lone wolf owning my own business, now trying to sell that to companies that pay lots of money for that. And I had no idea what I'm doing. Still learning, actually. We're still working on business development because it could be so much better. Um, but that was really clunky as well. So it was just kind of a dead period. And then, of course, now this year in 2020, not only am I dealing with my own learning curve and that whole thing, but there's also COVID and the, the economy is crazy. Jobs are crazy. And so it's been such a roller coaster ride this year. Yeah, it's been it's a, definitely been a roller coaster ride. And it's been uh, it's been a much longer roller coaster ride than I think everybody was um, expecting it to be, <laughs> which is <laughs> which is unfortunate. <laughs> Um, talk us through then a little bit about then, I mean, we talked about challenges, but you know, like what, what have, like, what have been some of the highlights? Like what have been, what have been some of the high points of, of, of your business journey? And Thank you for asking that. I don't get asked about good stuff a lot. And let me tell you, I love my gold stars, right? Um, so one of the things, and if, I'm so proud, I can't stop talking about it is in September, 2019, my business, despite all of the learning curves we've had we were voted the number one military spouse owned business overall. Like that's an amazing accomplishment. And I think of all the other military spouses that I know that kick butt that should have won that award. And somehow I did, which speaks to the service we provide. Um, and I think that we're doing a really good thing for the military community. Um, so that's something I'm so proud of. That's definitely probably my favorite highlight, but some of the other things I've gotten to, sort of learn along the way is who my people are and who my people are not. And once you sort of whittle down your tribe, it makes life a bit easier. And it's like you hone into each other. Um, the military community is so incestuous, and I mean it in the most loving way possible, but we take care of our own. Um, and sometimes, being in this little bubble has prevented me from meeting good mentors and people that could have helped me out along the way. And so I've really figured out who my people are in terms of the job seekers I'm trying to provide to the business I want to work with. And then also mentors and peers that have helped me out along the way. Um, so those, just the communities, the, the long answer to make yeah. the short of it is the community. Well, and, and when you're talking about the community, when you're talking about uh, mentors specifically, are, are you referencing also just not like non-military veterans or yeah, non-military veterans, non-military uh, mentors is that is and, and peers. Is that, is, is that part of what you're talking about? Um, I have a large military community, which is, you know, we can segment it out and think about me. I was a soldier and I'm a military spouse. There are some military spouses that are not in my tribe, and there are some service members that are not in my tribe, but kind of whittling down who's who in the zoo for me and who I have value to bring to and who brings value to me has really tremendously helped um, me figure out who my people are. But I don't have a whole heck of a lot of people that are non-military in my life outside of family and loved ones. No, I totally understand. We all, uh, we all kind of 
tend to find each other. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's, it's the funniest thing. Cause I mean, you, you can be in a room full of just random people you never met and the military people will somehow, some way we just kind of, <laughs> just kind of find each other. It's just yeah, one of those things. Like I don't, I'm the worst. I'm like the kind of gal. I remember all the words to the song, but I can't remember the name of the band. It was this Will Smith movie about robots. And then you open the garage door up where they store the robots and the, gr- the robots are all standing together in a clump. If you could, anyways. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, that's a, that's a perfect, that's a perfect visual. That's a, that's a <laughs> perfect visual. That's exactly right. I and mean, probably standing at the position of attention. <laughs> um, what would you like to say then to those that are, that are in the early stages of maybe their own startup? Or mm-hmm. those that are still like, you know, maybe they're still thinking of an idea, but maybe more specifically, those that are can probably more closely relate to where you are as you're as you've been growing. You know, mm-hmm. what like, I, mean, I, mean, I guess, like what words of advice would you have for those? Well, um, the first thing would be to offset your weaknesses. I am kind of a big picture person, a big idea person. I'm a shiny object syndrome person, and I am not a detail calendar scheduling person. You know that person, the one that like enjoys thoroughly organizing a calendar. That is not me. Um, I literally on my Calendly, when I have people schedule appointments with me, I have it in all bold, call me, because I'm so scatterbrained about details. I won't even remember to make a phone call. Um, so I, I want people just to call me. That way I just answer the phone and it makes my life easier. So offset your weakness. Um, you can be a lone wolf and fail alone, or you can succeed together by finding people that offset your own weaknesses, um, whether it be a business partner or if you hire on team members that are good at what you are not good at. That's the first thing is, you know, I as a human being, big picture, shiny object syndrome, had to change my business model entirely because I just didn't pay attention in the beginning and did what I knew without seeking consult or advice or wisdom from people that were good at what I wasn't. So offset your weaknesses. Um, Second thing, don't be afraid to poke belly buttons. I'm a nice gal, but I can be pretty blunt force trauma and direct. And in some communities that doesn't work out very well, but in the military community, I'm so lucky it works out pretty well. Um, Don't be afraid to shake trees because safe, like Jamie knows how to write a resume, safe doesn't always pay the bills. And so you'll have to step outside your comfort zone, do something crazy, and you'll have to tick some people off. I'm not saying you have to go out there and make them mad, but not everybody is your audience not you're not going to be able to sell your product to everybody and so you have to leave some folks in the dust in order to succeed you got to poke belly buttons to find the right people um and then the last thing is to own your stupidity yeah. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> yeah own your stupidity because if you are in denial that you're stupid and you don't know everything you're never going to learn what you need to learn to be successful and so had i only owned my stupidity in the beginning i would have avoided all of this business chaos that i had gone through would have found my mentors early on surrounded myself with talent smarter people in the room than myself and i would have just saved myself a lot of heartache so own yeah. your stupidity and don't be afraid to hire people that know more things than you know <laughs> yeah for sure for sure Yep. That's awesome. Um, since you do have a really unique perspective, I, I really like to just take a couple of minutes and let's, let's kind of talk about the, some of the more unique challenges that face military spouses. So those mm-hmm. that are, um, you know, maybe they've been moving around a whole bunch. Like, is there, and, and this is a world I don't know a whole lot. Um, I've seen it secondhand. So, I mean, I grew up in a career military family, uh, but myself, I only served for just a, a handful of years. And so there's folks out there that are in the middle of a career. Um, how does that process work then for people as they're as they're trying to find continuity in their own careers, despite the fact they're PCSing every every three years? So this is my jam, and the reason Begin Within is what it is now is to help those military spouses find long term careers that they can take with them or transfer and get paid what they're worth and have some career continuity. That's why I do what I do. Um, So let me just start by saying military spouses, there's sort of two buckets. Let me 
there's two different types of military spouse and I am super generalizing it, but this is how I serve them best. There is the young hot off the presses military spouse. And when I say young, I mean new military spouse. I don't mean it as an age. They may be married in late in their career and they're just getting that dose of holy crap, being a military spouse is hard. Um, Military spouses that are physically young, 19 years old, maybe have a child and life is chaotic, but they just want to have a profession and a vocation and they want to work. And you, you might find these spouses floating around working in the commissary or working on the economy at, you know, a retail shop or something like that. They just want to work and get qualified. So there's that audience of military spouses, right? Who just need a profession and want to get in to do something purposeful so they can contribute to their family. And then there is the scorned military spouse who's been in this for a minute. They've moved a bunch. They've dealt with deployments. They've probably got children and they aren't getting paid what they're worth. They are qualified with maybe an advanced degree, but they're working in something like an admin position, just scraping to get by and have a job at all. And they've been burned. They've been told by employers they don't want to be hired because they're a military spouse. Um, They have a hard time finding childcare when they move. Uh, Just the whole shebang of problems. So there's these two different people. There's like the bright-eyed and bushy-tailed military spouses who just want to be purposeful. And then there's those scorned, I've been in this for a minute, military spouses. And so whenever I am serving up advice for them and stuff like that, that's who I really have to think about. Um, If you don't fall into one of those two buckets, I overgeneralized. There's so many other options out there, you know, staying at home, being a stay-at-home parent, being an entrepreneur, among other things. But the two types of folks I, I typically serve are you know, the bright eyed and bushy tailed and the scorned military spouse. And so um, it's a challenge. There's, there's different challenges that those two buckets of military spouses face. One of them is barrier to entry. I maybe don't have the education or credentials and work experience that I need. And then the other one is I have all of that stuff, but I'm still struggling to be where I should be in my career. I'm not getting paid enough. The work I'm doing isn't challenging enough, et cetera. And so it's a totally different, um, totally different barriers and obstacles that they face outside of the, the standard, hey, we move a lot, like, you know, those types of things. Yeah, because um, it's not just moving. It's, it's, it's all, the other, all the other crap that comes with that, you know, from, mm-hmm. from deployments and issues with kids or I mean, whatever. I mean, it's like moving is, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot there's that military lot. spouses go Children, through. Children, childcare is probably the top career concern that I okay. hear, ironically. Now some, there's military families that do not have children and this, they still struggle with their career because of the relocating. Right. Uh, it's almost unanimously every parent that is a military spouse, childcare is an issue. Um, I'm hoping that COVID-19 is opening up doors for military spouses because we've already been doing this. Uh, We've already had to be flexible and figure out what the heck to do in these chaotic times that are our normal life, let alone COVID when everything is crazy. Yeah. I'm hoping it's an opportunity that will allow military spouses some grace and flexibility in the future with their current employers. I'm hoping, Um, but you never know. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, because I mean, the workplace right now is is being challenged by the fact that it it has to adopt a remote model, uh, remote first model specifically, and so you'll find companies that are hiring, like the sem. I've seen it. It's like the semi remote position where you have to be based out of a certain area, say live within fifty miles of, you know, X office, um, and they're going to be remote till further notice, maybe through the end of the year, and then they'll you know go back to the brick and mortar location. At, be, at the beginning of the year, um, or you've got the other, the other flavor of company that has adopted a completely remote model. So your business may be out of Florida and you're hiring somebody out of, you know, Wyoming and that's totally okay. As long as you're able to, you know, do what you need to do. And maybe there's a periodic meeting, you know, over zoom <laughs> that you need to do. Right. So I, I, I mean, I would hope kind of like what you're saying. I mean, I, I would, I certainly would hope that 
this whole framework now is actually creating more opportunities for military spouses. And specifically now, they could theoretically work in the same position with the same company for a number of years. And the move, the moving process is completely transparent to the employer because it doesn't matter now. They're, they're remote, right? <laughs> I always recommend to military spouses who are in a job they like, if you have to relocate and you're in a brick and mortar position, ask early, you know, may I work Tuesdays and Thursdays from home? Oh. and design it a proof of concept for your employer and the reason you're doing that is to prove productivity that you can work from home be productive and not physically be present in the office that gives you a chance later down the road when you do move to advocate for yourself and say i worked from home two days a week for the past year and i did just fine may i take my job with me right and you've given yourself proof in the pudding that yeah. if you were able to do it while you work there you know part, part time then you can do it again if you move and you can do it full time. So yeah, that's a great, that's something it, I always recommend. No, I mean, that's a great strategy. It's a great strategy. Cause then you've, you've, uh, you've written your own case study, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> like you've already shown it. Like, so, I mean, I think that's the best that, I mean, that's a, that's brilliant. That, that's a yeah. brilliant little nugget of advice there. Um, so let's, so then let's kind of, let's roll back then to the, you know, to the staffing world and like mm -hmm. what in the lessons that you're learning there. So, so, and talking a little bit more business, business ish, uh, topics here. So, you know, like, have you seen an immense amount of competition, I guess, in the work in, in the corporate corporate world in terms of trying to acquire, um, companies that want to retain you. And like, do you, do you see that? Do you see competition increasing or do you, or like do you feel like you have a competitive advantage? I guess is really the question I'm trying to ask because you you're offering a very specific type of person. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good question. So uh, there is more than enough military talent to go around, and that's who I sell to these employers. Okay. Uh, and there's a lot of of me's out there. There's all these other organizations, local and national that provide military talent to companies. There's a ton of us. But what I know about this space is, yeah, there's some competition. We're talking about blue ocean strategy. There's some blood in the water, right? But there's more than enough military talent to go around and I can't place them all. I wish I could. I would be bankrolling if I could do that, but I cannot. I only have a certain amount of bandwidth. And so we need competition in order to place these military veterans and spouses. Um, what I am finding is that the battle is less with my business competitors, other staffing agencies, and more with stereotypes. Um, for example, in this, again, it could be incendiary and all is with good intention. A company, for example, a Fortune 500 company may have a veteran hiring initiative in place that is already mature. And they've been hiring veterans and they've been doing a heck of a good job at it but they do not know what to do with a military spouse. And their current efforts are to roll up the military spouse hiring program into the veteran hiring program. And there is just two totally separate sets of needs in those two demographics. And I work with them both and I have been them both, right? Um, but a veteran isn't moving as much, a military spouse is still moving, a veteran comes armed with their military experience and those hard, tangible skills that they earn from there in the defense contracting world. A lot of the time, they already come with the clearance. They already come with the job that they needed to have that experience from their MOS in the military. But the military spouse doesn't. And so they get stuck in these, oh, you're so cute, be an admin jobs. And that's how the company deals with them because they aren't, they aren't meeting the need of the military spouses, uh, which a military spouse, by the way, can have all of those same hard skills, they have a high level of education, and they'll come in and kick butt for you if you just give them a chance, right? Um, but I just, I deal more with stereotypes, and that's my biggest competition, is wow. military spouse placement is not the same as a veteran placement. Yeah, you know, like after you said it, I'm like, yeah, that, I mean, that makes sense. I just, I, I wouldn't have thought that though, like on, when when we open the conversation up but now that you say that yeah i mean i i can see that and it's really unfortunate like it, it's unfortunate that that 
that stereotype exists. And I think you I think you summed it up really, really well. Um, and and I, I also think it's great that there is like there is such a pool of people that I mean, there's enough work for everybody. There's plenty of room for everybody to to uh, to kind of do a similar similar type of business. But I think what 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 makes you unique, obviously, is I mean, you have a very unique um, like brand that you're coming from. And I mean, this is the, this is the world I live in. I'm, I'm in the marketing and branding world. So like coming at it with a very specific niched focus is is a tremendous strength and you specifically have the strength because you've come from both sides of the both sides of this deal um which which makes that really uh i mean that's a that's that's a huge weapon for you so no i was just i and i was just genuinely just genuinely curious and so um you know i i mean i i feel like kind of as we're winding down our 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 time together i just you know i'd love to give this last bit back to you like if there's any if there's if there's anything else that you want to get off your chest, if there's any other hot button hot button topics or um, words of advice um, that you'd love to share, I mean, I would I would love to hand this back to you. Um, thank you, Aaron, for the chance to lay something else out there. Same problem I was just talking about in terms of the needs of veterans being different than the needs of military spouses in entrepreneurship and business ownership land. Uh, there's a million programs out there to teach veterans how to run a business and to open a business. But military spouse business owners, again, have different needs. And so, for example, there's uh, like Bunker Labs. Uh, I'm a part of that group and a cohort, a virtual cohort. I'm a military spouse and a veteran, but I have different needs than a you know veteran business owner who lives in the same city for the next portion of their retirement. You know, I need a portable business that can be viable from anywhere in the world. And not all veterans need that. And so the, the training that you get in some of these programs, it just is, there's different needs. And so I'm, a, I am so grateful for the abundance of entrepreneurship resources out there. Um, and there's a handful of military spouse specific entrepreneurship resources. But um, again, it's just something to point out is that you cannot roll a military spouse training program of any type up into a veteran training program and expect the same results and success rates if you're not treating the spouse a little bit differently. No, I think that's great. It's a tremendous, that's a tremendous perspective. And I, and I just want to thank you for, for sharing, sharing some of your time with me. And uh, I've really enjoyed getting to, getting to know you better, but also getting to hear your story. And just, I just want to thank you for sharing your story. And, um, and so how, how can people, how can people get in touch with you? Okay, the easiest way to contact me is to go through my website. It's literally jchapman.com, uh, common spelling, C-H-A-P-M-A-N. Perfect. Um, out of everything else I have, that's the easiest thing to spell. <laughs> yeah, right, right. That is one benefit, right? Like, I mean, of, of all the things you had to overcome, at least, at least you got a last name that there's not a whole lot of alternate spellings to that one. <laughs> <laughs> my maiden name was O'Bannon, like with an apostrophe in it. Couldn't, that was just not happening. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's great. Well, well, Jamie, thanks again. I really, I, I, I really do appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Aaron. This was wonderful. And uh, I, hope that, I hope whatever I had to say helped someone out there. Certainly. Well, I really enjoyed getting to interview Jamie. Uh, I love her energy level. I love the tenacity with which uh, she has and how she presents herself and been through quite a bit. I mean, the, the military spouse journey is certainly no easy road. Uh, for many of you out there, you can certainly relate to that, uh, to that reality and some of the challenges, very unique challenges faced by, by military spouses um, that are trying to keep a career going. So I loved, I loved a lot of the wisdom and insights that she shared. I loved her openness uh, about where she is in, in in the process and how she had to pivot from doing nothing but resume writing services to now doing staffing and in, in in that whole recruiting space and she she's learning it but she's she's obviously she's going to crush it so if you guys uh, obviously are looking for some support in that in that spot I would encourage you to reach out to her uh, pretty high level of confidence that she'll she'll take care of you and if she can't figure it out she she or she can't she will certainly figure it out uh, which I think is a that's what I love about veterans right is and it and it goes back you, you didn't hear this conversation that jamie and i had um off camera after the interview was over but 
there's there's a thing with veterans, right? And 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 I would even put military spouses into this bucket, but for a minute, let's focus on veterans. Yeah, there are scumbag military veterans out there. Uh, there's scumbag service members. There's scumbag people everywhere. But I would love to think that 90% or better of military veterans, when we say we're going to do something for you, if it's a B2B transaction, for example, you know with, with a pretty high level of confidence and certainty that that service member is going to do what they said they're going to do, and they're going to do it to the very best of their, of their ability. Um, whether or not it's going to take them five hours or 50 hours, they're going to figure it out. And so that's, that's one thing I love about the veterans community. There's a, there's a tenacity about us, right? There's a tenacity behind our business ventures and the things that we do that can kind of get in our own way sometimes and lengthen our learning curve. Because if you're like me, you're hard headed and it takes you longer to learn some lessons. Uh, but when you learn it and when you get it, you're like, you're gone. Like, like you got it. So anyway, I just want to share that with you because that was like a realization I had as her and I were talking during the interview, but then also off camera. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I just want to thank you again for just sincerely. I just want to thank you for listening and watching. This is my passion project. Uh, you'll notice I haven't yet taken sponsors onto the show. I may eventually do that, but this is my way of just giving back and presenting to you, the, our community, um, just the mighty power that we have as veterans. And I love showcasing people in their own journeys. So anyway, thank you for tuning in. Look forward to seeing you again next week. See ya.